Hey Racer fans, thanks for joining us for our weekly look back on uh, some of the bravest and some of the toughest guys in racing that uh, have come along in the last four or five decades. Today, one of my favorite people, because it reminds me of some of my favorite times at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, when anything was possible and people took chances. And nobody took more chances than Jerome Giles Sneva. That's right, the younger brother of Tom. Five times started at the Indy 500, but maybe one of the bravest men I ever saw at the Speedway. Just because of some of the cars he got in and some of the cars he qualified at the Speedway. The first time he came back here in 1976, Tom got him a ride. Nobody that liked anybody in their, their family would have given somebody a suggestion to get in this car. You needed a tetanus shot to walk into the garage. It was the biggest crate at the Speedway, and of course, Jerry didn't make the race. He comes back in 1977 with a 72 McLaren. The guy won't change the car. His mechanic won't change the car until he tells Jerry, you got to run wide open through turn one or three. So Giles does what he's told, goes wide open into three, spins all the way eight times, doesn't hit the wall, stops in four. The guy finally changes the car the way Jerry likes it. He makes the race, runs all day, finishes 10th. He's rookie of the year in 1977. 1978, he comes back, qualifies in the last minute. Here he is at the last row party with me and Larry Rice getting his check for 32 cents. He started 32nd. Thing blew up. But 1979 is what Jerry Sneva and Qualified at Indy were all about. His regular ride blows up. He's walking back to the garage area, head in his, head in his hands. You know, his month of May is over. His chance to make a living is done. He sees this black AMC car sitting in the qualifying line. It had been driven by Neil Bonnet all month, but there was nobody there. And Jerry said, well, where's the driver? And they said, well, he got stuck in Dover. It was raining. He's got to stay there and qualify. And Jerry Sneva says, you want me to drive it? And they went, well, sure. Giles goes out and makes three hot laps, comes in and pulls it in the qualifying line. Not to practice. He pulls right in the qualifying line because it's getting late in the day. And they're like, what are you doing? He said, raise the front and rear wings a half a turn. Let's just try and put the, you guys want to be in the race or not? And they're like, well, yeah, you want to try it already? Yeah. So Giles goes out. Now, Jerry's a pretty big guy. Neil Bonnet wasn't. So he mashes the throttle, and the throttle sticks wide open as he's going into turn one. Now this was 1979. Guys, if anybody was running wide open, nobody was talking. And not too many people ever tried to run wide open, I don't think, by 1979. There might have been a few. So Jerry turns her down almost into the grass, but he makes the, he makes the first turn and doesn't crash. And he makes the second turn, and this is the way he processed things, going down the backstretch. Hell, maybe I can make it through three and four. He qualifies all four laps with the throttle stuck wide open. They make the race. He pulls in. They get their qualifying picture. And Jerry tells the guys, by the way, you probably won't be able to get the nose off because the throttle's stuck in the nose. And they were like, yeah, right, sure, great job, buddy. They didn't believe him until they went through tech and they couldn't get the nose off because the throttle was stuck. But 1980 was the first time he ever had a, a kind of new ride. It was a two-year-old Lola. And he qualified at fifth. And after he qualified fifth, Jim Hall came up and said, how the hell did you qualify that car fifth? He said, Al Unser hated that car. And Jerry said, hell, it's the best car I've ever had at Indy. So he's running to the top five all day. I can't remember what happened, but he pounded the wall, got a concussion, gave a memorable interview to Sam Posey from the infield hospital. He was cuckoo. He couldn't remember what was going on. So comes back in 81. They stick a bolt in the uh, pop-off valve. Don't tell him. He qualifies. They get thrown out of the race because they said they cheated. Well, believe me, he might have had a little extra power down the straightaway, but if you were brave enough to drive that old thing as fast as he did, you should have been in the race. 82 is the last Indy 500 he made. 83 he shows up, and he probably has a record for bringing out the yellow the fastest in the history of the Speedway. He spun at 5.57 on a Tuesday, went out Wednesday morning and crashed at 11.02. So they get the car fixed, they bring it back, he's sitting in it, they start it up in the pits and the throttle sticks wide open. Jerry hits the kill switch, nothing. Things still running wide open. They got to stuff rags in the injectors to finally get the thing shut off. So he gets out of the car, goes and has a beer, has a cigarette, has lunch, comes back. They got the thing ready. We're ready, Giles. Jerry gets in the car, goes out and runs a lap at 40 miles an hour, waves to the 300 people that are in the stands that day, pulls in, gets out, puts his helmet in his helmet bag and says, I quit. You've been trying to kill me all month. See you later. And uh, that was Jerry Sneva's last ride at the Indy 500. But I tell you this. Mike Mosley said once, if Jerry Sneva ever had a good race car, he'd be tough to beat. Pretty good compliment from the old Mose. And Giles exemplified the spirit of what Indianapolis is all about, and qualifying and hanging it out and taking a chance, because nobody took more chances than he did, and nobody was braver than our hero, Jerry Giles Jerome Sneva.
A salute to you, my man, the quick and the brave. This is Robin Miller for Racer.com. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next week.